part two. She bent her foot a little so she could scratch herself behind the ear with it. The ringmaster was not at all pleased to have Pippi performing in his circus. He wanted to get rid of her, which is why he crept up and loosened the mechanism that kept the rope tight, certain that Pippi would fall down. But Pippi didn't. She simply used the rope as a swing. To and fro she went, swinging faster and faster, and then all of a sudden she leapt into the air and landed right on top of the ringmaster. He was so afraid, he started running. Oh, this is a jolly good horse, said Pippi. But why hasn't it got any bows in its hair? By now, Pippi thought it was time to go back to Tommy and Annika. She slid off the ringmaster's back and went and sat down. Now it was time for the next act. It was delayed for a while because the ringmaster had to go out and drink a glass of water and comb his hair. But he came back into the ring, bowed to the audience and said, Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments you will be able to watch the greatest miracle of all time. The strongest man in the world. Strong Adolf, who no one has ever beaten. May I present, ladies and gentlemen, Strong Adolf. And into the ring strode an enormous man, and he was wearing flesh-coloured tights and had a leopard skin around his waist, and he bowed to the audience and looked very pleased with himself. Just look at his muscles, said the ringmaster, and felt Strong Adolf's arm where the muscles swelled like bowling balls under his skin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I make my finest offer. Who among you dares to take on Strong Adolf in the wrestling match? Who dares to try and beat the world's strongest man? One hundred krona to him who beat Strong Adolf. Hundred krona. Think of that, ladies and gentlemen. Please step up. Who will step up? No one stepped up. What did he say? asked Pippi. Why is he speaking Greek? Well, he said that anyone who can beat that massive man will get a hundred krona, said Tommy. Well, I can do it, said Pippi. But I think it's a pity to fight him, because he looks so kind. But you can't do that, surely, said Annika. He's the world's strongest man. Man, yes, said Pippi, but I am the world's strongest girl. Remember that. While he was waiting, strong Adolf was lifting huge balls of iron and bending iron bars to show how strong he was. Well, everyone, bellowed the ringmaster, is there really nobody who wants to earn a hundred krona? Shall I really have to keep some for myself? He asked, waving the hundred krona note about. Well, not if I can help it, said Pippi, and she climbed over the barrier and into the ring. The ringmaster flew into a frenzy when he spotted her. Go! Disappear! You, I, I do not want to see, he hissed. Why do you always have to be so unfriendly, Pippi scolded him. All I want to do is fight strong Adolf. This is not the place for your yo yokings, meaning jokings, said the ringmaster. Go away before strong Adolf hear your impertinence. But she walked straight past the ringmaster and up to strong Adolf. She took hold of his big hand and shook it warmly. Now, you're going to have to... We're going to have to have a little tussle, you and me, she said. Strong Adolf stared at her and wondered what was going on. I'll start in one minute, said Pippi. And so she did. She held Strong Adolf in a firm grip. And before he knew how it happened, she had flung him down on the mat. Strong Adolf shot up all red in the face. Come on, Pippi, yelled Tommy and Annika. All the people at the circus heard that and they shouted. Come on, Pippi, as well. The ringmaster sat on the barrier and wrung his hands. He was furious, but Strong Adolf was even more furious. Never in his entire life had he experienced anything so outrageous. Now that little red-haired kid would see what kind of man Strong Adolf was. He rushed at her and grabbed her round the waist. But Pippi stood as solid as a rock. You can do better than that, 
she said, to encourage him. But then she slipped out of his grasp and in a flash, Strong Adolf was lying on the mat again. Pippi stood beside him, waiting. She didn't have to wait long. With a yell, he got up and stormed towards her. Tum ti tum ti tum, said Pippi. Everyone in the audience stamped their feet and threw their hats into the air and shouted, Come on, Pippi! When Strong Adolf came rushing towards her for the third time, Pippi picked him up and carried him high in the air all round the ring. And then she lay him down on the mat again and held him there. Now, young fellow, I think we've had about enough, she said. I, it won't get much more entertaining than this. Pippi wins, Pippi wins, shouted all the people at the circus. Strong Adolf looped off as fast as he could and the ringmaster was obliged to hand Pippi the hundred kroner note, although he looked as if he would rather eat her up. Here you are, little miss, he said, one hundred kroner. That, sneered Pippi, what do I want with that bit of paper? You can have it to wrap herrings in if you want, and she returned to her seat. That's a very long circus, isn't it, she said to Tommy and Annika. A little nap wouldn't hurt, but wake me up if I can help with anything. And she leaned back in her seat and fell fast asleep. And there she lay snoring while the clowns and the sword swallowers and the snake charmers performed their tricks with Tommy and Annika and everyone else in the audience. But I still think Pippi was best, whispered Tommy to Annika. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> she's like a sort of, um, you know, she's sort of like a got sort of superhero qualities, hasn't she? Okay, I will continue tomorrow. Sorry, <coughs> can't stop coughing. Coughing. Pippi has a visit from thieves. Hmm, that seems like a very foolish thing to try and steal from Pippi Longstocking. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.